Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. And actually, you know what, speaking of Twitter and Instagram followers, yo, you guys should really go over there and follow me on the social media platforms, man. Um, Instagram, I have low-key been slacking on. I'm like, that's where I'm usually supposed to, you know, put like my behind the scenes type stuff. I really haven't done that in a while. Don't worry, I'm gonna get back on it when I start on the next subscriber video tomorrow. I'm gonna post either, you know, a behind the scenes clip of me editing or me recording, something along those lines for you guys to see on Twitter. Um, you know, Twitter's really where you guys, uh, see i guess the other side of me that i don't put on youtube youtube is where i try to keep it you know mostly giants oriented and a semi-professional semi-casual type of presentation twitter is just where i'm all out uh just myself you know i talk about memes and all that shout out to the guys that do follow me you know guys like nerding out joseph clark uh cowboy x factor shout out to you guys you guys are always in my twitter and or instagram posts means a lot to me and uh you guys should really get over there and click that follow button and with today's video you know what i mean and now and uh i'm gonna put a timestamp down below for when i actually start the topic of whatever the title of this video is gonna be so you guys could skip past all this i've been low-key feeling mad tired yo so kind of of a like a check-in like a rest stop for any of you guys that have also been feeling tired or down you know what i'm saying take a minute take a breather I'm gonna take some deep breaths, take a little rest stop, you know, calm down a little bit, just let life's worries flow through, flow away for a hot second, and use this as a rest stop. Put any concerns that you have down below, you know, I'll try and talk with you guys. Uh, I don't know, I think Cabin Fever might finally be catching up with me after about four months in quarantine here in NYC. I've been quarantining for four months now. If anybody's going through, you know, kind of like just feeling down and tired, you know, let me know. Or if you want to do it through DMs or something, I'm always open to talk. So, you know, use this as a rest stop. I'm, I'm always down for that. And with that being over, I guess let's get into today's video. So, uh, I made a vid on this, I think, about a month ago, almost a month ago on June 10th, talking about Leonard Williams and Marcus Golden, for that matter. And I was like, all that video was about was me saying we should really keep the dates in mind for uh, Leonard Williams. It is June 15th, the last date when the Giants can uh, extend him on a long-term deal. And if they don't, he'll just be on the franchise tag and then for the one year, and then I think they're gonna let go of him. And then for Marcus Golden, it is July 22nd. I think I said June 15th, I meant July 15th, my bad. But for Marcus Golden, it is July 22nd for when the free agent tender, that date is up. And if he's not signed by then, then he's gonna be back on the Giants for a $4.125 million deal. I was just like, let's keep our eyes on that. And the Marcus Golden situation, I really don't, my opinion on it hasn't changed. But with the Leonard Williams one, instead of like Golden, where stayed a consistent, uh, like he looks like he's going to end up back on the team. And the only weird thing is that nobody's been trying to sign him. With Williams, it's kind of gone a little crazy because he's still demanding an absorbent amount of money out here. An absurd amount of money for really no reason. Leonard Williams and as recent as July 4th, our Ralph Vacchiano of SNY Sports let it be known to the public that he's still seeking a long-term 18 to 20 million dollar deal a year. What in the world is Leonard, Leonard Williams? Who is on crack? Is Leonard Williams crazy? And this is, you know, it's about to be a completely opinionated video also, you know, the only really facts I will throw up for this one uh, would be like what I just said with Ralph Vacchiano letting it be known. This is just my opinion from here on out. So if you're not a fan of that, I guess I should say click away because there's recently been not that many fans of the channel. I don't know how they coming out of the woodwork. It is what it is. But Leonard Williams, you're not, what in the world is he thinking? On a regular day, Leonard Williams is not worth 18 to 20 million dollars. At most, I thought we were gonna give this dude like 13 or 14 million dollars. At most, that's not even what I would give him. I would give him a 12 million dollar deal. Preferably 10 or 11, but that's not really, really realistic. Back when we were trying to figure it out before free agency officially began, and I actually did think the Jazz were gonna sign him to a long term deal, I was like, please let it just be somewhere around 12 million dollars, maybe three or four years. And this was still then, he was demanding 18 to 20, and I was like, all right, he's going to calm down. I think he's going to catch his senses as the offseason moves along. Apparently not. Apparently, Leonard Williams is still out here. He's still, I don't know what he's doing. It's some type of drugs because he's, 
he's not worth that money. You talk about a guy, listen, and I defend Leonard Williams too. I am a Leonard Williams defender on this channel. For those of you that don't know, I am, a lot of people do, you know, go and crap on the guy and say he doesn't deserve to be here. I'm one of the guys that say, um, I think he has potential and he definitely did help out the defense when he came. It's in the numbers. He definitely did help out the run defense. And then you talk about the fact that he was double teamed for like 62 or 64% of the plays last year. That definitely helped out guys like Dexter Lawrence and even Marcus Golden to get to the quarterback more. Definitely helped out guys like Dalvin Thomason to be stellar in the run game. You know, that just doesn't go anywhere. And then his potential to perform in a fluid defense now where I think he can flex some of his pass rushing muscles. I'm always somebody that defended him. But you're not a 18 to 20 million dollar defensive tackle in the league. That's Aaron Donald money. That's Chris Jones money. When you talk about the production you've had for this team and you've only been on the team for about a half a year and you've only th the only thing you've managed to produce pass rush wise is half a sack. You talk about guys specifically like Chris Jones who is in that 18 to 20 million dollar, you know, range. Last year, Jones, a pro bowler, nine sacks. I think he had a fumble, 39 tackles, 20 quarterback hits. Bro, you, you go back in 2018 where he had 15 and a half sacks. Are you kidding me, Leonard Williams? You're nowhere near that. I think the most amount of sacks Leonard ever had for his entire career. And you know what? I am going to pull up a Google search now. Let me get this real quick. The most amount of sacks he ever had was seven back in 2016 with the Jets. You are not an 18 to 20 million dollar defensive tackle, bro. You're not. You're a glorified. You're honestly, I was about to say like a glorified uh, Dalvin Thompson, a glorified Snacks Harrison, but he is more versatile than them. He's, I don't know what he is. We have arguably somebody on the team that's better than him in Dexter Lawrence. The fact that you can argue that, let me know that you're not worth the money you're demanding. I really hope and I pray to God this is just the old quote that's being recycled i'm not sure if it is the way that you know it came out from vacchiano made it seem as though it was something recent you know because he's like the two sides are not even close on making the deal and not making the deal on what he's seeking i really hope it's something old because you think about it this is this is what he said at the beginning of the offseason too but you think about it it's not even a regular offseason and in a regular offseason that would be crazy this isn't a regular offseason i think we all know the cap in some way is going to be affected because the NFL is going to lose revenue. So they even have less money to give out and you're still demanding 18 to $20 million. It, does, it doesn't make sense in a regular off season and definitely not in a strange one that we're in right now. I don't know what Leonard Williams is on, bro, but he's 100% not worth that money. If this is actually what he's demanding, yo, my God, at this point in the year, this is actually what he's still demanding? Man, just let the franchise tag run its course. Don't even consider bringing him back. You know, beforehand, I would consider bringing him back, you know, on that $12 million deal a year. Maybe if he broke out this season and somehow had more than seven sacks, I'll consider something a bit more, you know, expensive, a bit more, you know, hurtful on the pockets, but, but not 18 to $20 million. Jesus Christ. And this is 100%. I'm also... I guess you could kind of label me a Dave Gellman defender. I've tried to be as down the middle as I can. The dude's been terrible in free agency and good in drafting. Um, this is one of the reasons he's terrible in free agency. This is 100%, you know, something that Gellman put himself in and the Giants front office put themselves in with this situation, making that whole trade for Leonard Williams and everything. I don't know one person that was happy with that trade, looking back at it. I don't know one Giants fan, one media expert, one of the, you know, one of the the couch coaches that was happy with this everybody was you know wondering what in the world was happening with this move when it happened and it's because of stuff like this man a hundred percent this is completely dave Gellman and the front office's fault for putting themselves in this situation right here i'm not gonna try and defend that but i mean jesus 18 to 20 million dollars that's crazy but something that baffles me even more and even i had uh, a funny a little laugh when I said wow there's something that baffles me even more than Leonard Williams and his contract is Aldrich Rosas I mean I've it's weird you know I was one of the dudes that took a very common rational approach to the DeAndre Baker situation when I found out about it the first thing I said was it could be like the Janoris Jenkins situation a, f a few years ago where they found a, a dead body in Jenkins' household and everybody was freaking out saying, oh my God, is Jenkins a murderer or is he involved with some crime or something like that? And I was, you know, and I remember that it turned out to be, you know, something deal with, um, I think it had to do with his brother or something like that. And Janoris had nothing to do with it. 
And I, I, that was the first thing that came to my mind because it was the last time we had a cornerback incident. And so that was why I took a rational approach to the DeAndre Baker situation, along with the fact that it just seemed out of left field. Now, the Alger Prozac situation and the hit and run also seemed out of left field. But something that I've been consistent with when talking about his situation is that it's more cut and dry than a robbery, a hit and run with witnesses, with, you know, traffic cameras, with the fact that he was in the car and that he was at the scene and the police apprehended him. Much more cut and dry than a DeAndre Baker that was not at the scene, that the phone call was made two hours ago and all that. I thought for sure that Rosas would have been cut uh, very soon from the Giants after that situation came to light and it's already been a few weeks you know it's already sort of calmed down and another reason that I wanted him to be cut and I guess you could say I didn't react as rationally is because with hit and run and drunk driving it's also you know that kills a lot of people every year that's an idiotic decision you know a very conscious idiotic decision that Alge Grossas made in my opinion and while it's still alleged I still do oh my god I almost choked there I still do believe that it's a lot more cut and dry than really anything else but as of right now, he still is on the team. That does baffle me a little bit. Not because of everything that I just stated, but because he's going to be a convicted felon, uh, felon for the most part. He's facing multiple felony charges as of right now. You talk about a DUI, a hit and run, and I think in the state of California driving with a suspended license. And there's probably even more in there that I don't know about, but he's facing more than one felonies. And no matter how good of a lawyer you have, um, with the NFL and you do have good lawyers, I don't think they'll be able to get him off all of the felonies. I think he'll be convicted of one. And then you consider the fact that are, are the Giants going to have a convicted felon on the team? I don't think so. If he is convicted, they're 100% not going to have that on the team. They don't want that besmirching name or the organization. But as of right now, they're taking the rational step, which I could definitely respect them for. What does baffle me is that we haven't yet brought on any type of, you know, at least you know body to throw into training camp or any type of person that might be a replacement i completely understand that with dudes like gaskowski for example that have had the injury this past year it's going to be extremely hard to try and get their physicals checked through get the team doctors to them and to see if they're even healthy to come in for training camp but there are other options that are healthy that you could bring in right away you talk about the new york guardians kicker from the xfl who has experience in metlife stadium you talk about i think um Guys like uh, Ryan Suckup and Adam Vinatieri, who had bad seasons last year, but maybe, once again, just bring them in to be camp bodies, and even as a potential replacement, just bring in more kickers. They haven't done that, um, and I'm not talking about physically bringing in, obviously, I mean, just sign them to a um, one of those off-season contracts that's specifically to see if they could even make the team. That is what does baffle me about the situation right now, and along with the fact that he's still on here, we will see how it plays out. Maybe I should uh, be a bit more easy on Rosas, but I, I think it is a lot more straightforward than with what we've seen before. But that's really what I want to talk about today. Uh, you know, just a very, like I said before, how I kind of preface it, it was going to be a type of opinionated video. Um, but do let me know what you guys think on the Leonard Williams situation and the fact that as of right now, nothing has changed with the Giants place kicker in 2020. As of today, Ju July, what is it, July 5th? No, July 6th. As of July 6th, 2020, heading into the 2020 season, Aljic Rosas is going to be our place kicker. But put your comments down below. Let me know what you guys think. I'll see you tonight for the Madden stream, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.